back. Chair now recognizes the ranking member. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. Parnas, for being here today. Um, your involvement with the real Russian hoax about Joe Biden began in 2018 when, as a big donor and a big supporter of Donald Trump's, you were introduced to Rudy Giuliani, and you began working with him to dig up dirt on Joe Biden Ukraine. If you can just tell us quickly how you got involved in that. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I, I, I was a donor at the time. Uh, I became doing business with Rudy Giuliani. He, was in, he got involved in a business I was doing called Fraud Guarantee. And in the midst, we started spending a lot of time together until eventually in November of 2018, he approached me and asked me about my connections in Ukraine. After telling him about people that I knew and things that I heard, he, at that point, then he wanted me to go to Ukraine to find Viktor Shokin, the prosecutor general. And basically, uh, he wanted to go from uh, his fraud guarantee to guaranteeing a fraud uh, on the American people. But after turning over every stone and going down every rabbit hole, including interviewing Viktor Shokin and Zlachevsky, the owner of Burisma, did you ever find the smoking gun or any evidence that Donald Trump was looking for to paste on Joe Biden? On the contrary, uh, Representative Raskin, uh, not only did we keep hitting dead walls and not finding the smoking gun, but we kept running into uh, sources of the information that was coming out of Russia. Uh, in fact, Joe Biden was part of a global campaign, including by the United States, to oppose corruption and to go after the corrupt forces in Ukraine. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. At what point did the campaign to dig up dirt on Biden become a campaign to spread disinformation and lies about Biden? Uh, at some point, uh, when we hit a, a few brick walls, um, all of a sudden then I saw the shift uh, between the BLT group, which included John Solomon, the media personality, and Rudy Giuliani and other Trump lawyers, to start trying to push narratives that were we had no, uh, they were not validated. We had no way to validate them. Basically, uh, a letter would come over from somebody in Ukraine. I'd hand it over to John Solomon. Next thing you knew, you were, he was on Fox TV two hours later with uh, Sean Hannity. Um, at what point did Mr. Giuliani begin working directly with Russian agents and Russian assets, individuals who would later become sanctioned by Donald Trump's own Treasury Department? for spreading propaganda and disinformation against Joe Biden? Uh, it was sometime in uh, probably around May, June of 2019. W were you aware, was Mr. Giuliani aware that these people were basically just doing the bidding of Vladimir Putin? Absolutely. So he had no hesitation about spreading lies that were concocted by Russian agents? As long as it fit the narrative, absolutely not. How were you and Giuliani able to take these false allegations peddled by corrupt officials and Russian agents and promote and amplify them here in the United States in our political system? Weren't media groups skeptical of your claims? Um, most media groups, uh, I'd probably say all except for Fox and a few other uh, right-wing media groups uh, didn't want to take any of the information and that ag uh, aggravated uh, Rudy Giuliani and John Solomon and other players. And the main group that was being pushed through was Fox, uh, John, Sean Hannity, and some other media personnel over there. But then there was also other people that were doing the bidding for the Russian uh, people in Congress, like Senator Ron Johnson, like Congressman Pete Sessions that sits here right now that was with me from the very beginning on this journey into finding up the digging dirt on Joe Biden. Is Putin's war on Ukraine today, which has cost hundreds of thousands of people's lives, is that part of the vaunted Russia hoax, Russia hoax? Absolutely not. Is it real? Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to ask you a more personal question, if I might, Mr. Parnas, because uh, in my several years living through this extraordinary period of American history, I've tried to ask people like Michael Cohen and Cassidy Hutchinson. I've wondered about people like General Milley, General Kelly. Why did you break with all of the deceit and corruption and lies of Donald Trump? How did you get out of that culture? I mean, it was very difficult. I actually had to hit a brick wall myself and get arrested and uh, to be able to get out of that cult. Uh, because when you're in that cult, when you're around them, you're only, you have blinders on and you're only able to see a certain amount of information. You're only able to hear the certain amount of information. You're not 
allowed to go out of the outside out of the circle. And if you go outside of the circle, then you're not in the circle. So eventually you brainwash yourself to believing certain things that are not true. When I was arrested and able to and had some time to reflect and really understand what was going on, I started realizing looking back and thinking back to moments in time of where I was started thinking myself that this is this can't be true and we we're doing something wrong. Well, thank you for telling the truth and helping America to end this nightmare. I yield back to you, Mr. Chairman. Chair now recognizes the <laughs> gentleman's time's expired. Chair now recognizes Mr. Goldman for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, we only, I only have five minutes, Mr. Bobulinski, so I'm going to try to move quickly, and I'd appreciate if you just answer the questions. You testified that uh, Joe Biden was involved in your business venture related to uh, Oneida Holdings and Hunter Biden. So I want to drill down on the crux of what your testimony is. Oneida Holdings is the business venture that you are referring to, correct? When I'm referring to what? Can you ask Any business question? you did with the Bidens. Uh, my reference is the Sinohawk Holdings uh, LLC and Oneida Holdings LLC own 50% of that. Right. And Oneida Holdings was the 50% uh, that was on the American side of that Sinohawk deal, right? It was the 50% that was the Biden side of it. Some of the, you know, James Giller year is not an American, so. Sorry. Fair enough. Um, and it was a, a joint partnership memorialized in an incorporating document, correct? And it had equal shares divided among five partners. Is that right? Well, I can't. Well, Are you asking me about what you're holding up? I mean, because you're... I, you're I, sir, you're, was it an equal... Were there equal 20% shares among five partners? In, in what? Oneida in, Holdings. In the final signed documents? Yes. Is that what you're asking me? Yes. It is? It's not complicated. Well, it is because... Um, All right, you're just filibustering now. The answer iteration. is, you're filibustering, I get it, that there were five partners, Hunter Biden, Jim Biden, Rob Walker, James Gilliar, and you, each owned 20%. Do you well, well, they didn't each own their LLCs owned it, which is a material Do you difference. see uh, Joe Biden or an LLC related to Joe Biden on I this? I don't know if Joe Biden owned any of Jim Biden's LLC or Hunter Biden's LLC. I'll leave that up to the committee. Okay. And do you know when this agreement was entered into? Um, the poster board that you're holding up or the actual legal document that was signed? The agreement, sir. Look, we, the agreement. The agreement was signed May 22nd, 2017. Who was the vice president then? Uh, May 22nd, you said? I think it was Mike Pence. And uh, who was the president? Uh, Donald Trump. Okay. And when did you first meet Hunter Biden? I first met Hunter Biden in early 2017. When? When in 2017? The day or the month? An hour the month is good. Month? Uh, I believe I briefly met him in New York, but I spent the, the first meeting I had extensive time with him was in uh, early May 2017. Okay. And that was around the same time that you had those two meetings with Joe Biden, right? It was, but prior to that, I had numerous so, discussions look, you have with said, Hunter. You have said I had lawyers that, sir, working sir, through the documents. I, 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 that you're can asking. I please reclaim my time, sir? As okay. I said, we have to move quickly here. Um, uh, unfortunately, you, in your testimony earlier today, one of my colleagues asked you about that meeting at the bar, 45 minutes to 60 minutes. Um, and you were also asked about that in your transcribed interview, and in neither of your answers did you mention any discussion that you had at that meeting with Joe Biden about the Chinese business venture. Yet, in grandiose terms here today, you have declared that Joe Biden was involved and that you have mountains of irrefutable evidence to support it. So let's look at the mountains of irrefutable evidence. You provided the committee with a screenshot of a text message that uh, is between James Gilliard and you, dated May 11th, 2017. You see this? I don't know if you can see it. If you can't see, it's uh, just you and James Gilliard, though, right? You remember this text message, I'm sure. Uh, generally, yes. All right. And in it, Gilliard writes, man, you are right. Let's get the company set up, then tell H and family the high stakes and get Joe involved. And two days later, Mr. Gilliar sent an email to you CCing Rob Walker and Hunter Biden in which he suggested a division of the company and included a proposal of, quote, 10% held by H for the big guy, question mark. You remember that, right? Uh, the infamous uh, email with the big guy? Yes, yeah. I do. Um, did anyone ever respond to that email? 
Yes, they did numerous times. Sorry, Hunter Biden ever, himself excuse me, did. Excuse me, I, you're right. Well, no, did I think that's ever, important because sir, Hunter Biden has claimed that he didn't can you respond to it, and he responded okay. to it. The, I believe you're three just going to filibuster. I reclaim my time that's running out, but I will say, no one responded to the big guy reference for ten. Thank you so for making my what? point. They didn't have to respond right. because then, they all knew the big sir, guy was Joe I Biden. I reclaim my time, Mr. Chairman. Please control the witness. I would like to say, I would like to uh, get a little extra time, Mr. Chairman, because I want to read what Mr. Gilliar said to the Wall Street Journal. Quote, I would like to clear up any speculation that former vice president was involved with the 2017 discussions about our potential business structure. I am unaware of any involvement at any time of the former vice president. The activity in question never delivered and project revenue. Nine days later, the agreement without Joe Biden was signed. You and James Gilliar wanted Joe Biden involved, and that is why Hunter Biden dumped you and did the business That's on his own. That's a blatant lie, Mr. Goldman. You know better. The chairman's time's expired. The chair now recognizes Mr. Higgins from Louisiana for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bobulinski. Taylor Green from uh, Georgia for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Joe Biden continues to lie to the American people about his role in his family's businesses. In 2020, he stood up on stage of a presidential debate and told the American people that his family didn't take any money from China. That was a lie. Not only was it a lie, he knew it was a lie. He knew it because he met with his son, Hunter Biden's Chinese business associates. I want to talk about CEFC, which is the China Energy Fund Committee. Mr. Bobolinsky, who is Chairman Yi? Chairman Yee was the chairman of CEFC. Thank you. Jim Biden told the FBI and IRS that Chairman Yi was the protege of Xi Jinping, the leader of China and the Chinese Communist Party. Mr. Bobolinsky, Rob Walker told this committee that Joe Biden met Chairman Yi. Are you aware of that? Yes or no? I am now. I wasn't at the time. And Joe Biden also met with you. Is that right? Yes, he did. Twice. Who, who is Director Zhang? Director Zhang was uh, the number two at CFC. The executive director of CFC, the number two? Yeah, he was the number two executive, but really the point person that uh, I worked with and the Biden family worked with. And he's the individual that Hunter Biden was shaking down at the end of July 2017, demanding that they fund the uh, $10 million, they ultimately sent five, but $10 million directly to Hunter Biden's account, Owasco. Thank you, Mr. Bobolinsky. I want to show you a text message that Hunter Biden sent to you and his other business associates. I'm holding it right here. I'll read it to you. Hey, Tony, I have an idea. In light of the fact we are at an impasse of sorts and both James lawyers and my chairman gave an emphatic no, I think we should all meet in Romania. He's speaking about my chairman. When Hunter Biden came in for his deposition, he said that he was referring to Chairman Yi and that the rest of your group referred to Zhang as a different chairman. Does this make any sense to you? That's a lie. I never heard Director Zhang reference as chairman, <clears throat> and I had direct com communications with Director Zhang over WeChat, <clears throat> met him in Romania, met him in Moscow, met him around the world in New York, trying to develop this business, and he was never referred to as the chairman, first of all. Second of all, that makes absolutely no sense in the context of this message because we are discussing Oneida Holdings, LLC. Thank you, Chinese so he was not the chairman, just to clarify, yes Correct. or no? Okay. So I want to show you another text. When he said his chairman, he was talking about his dad. This is from Rob Walker. It didn't seem to make much sense to Rob Walker either. So he said that when Hunter, he said this to you, when Hunter was talking about his chairman, he was talking about his dad. When Rob Walker came in to give his transcribed interview to the committee, he basically said, well, Hunter was high or confused or mad. And Rob Walker said that he was just trying to calm things down between you and Hunter. But that doesn't really answer the question about who Hunter Biden is talking about. Hunter Biden lied to this committee. So here, clearly, he says Rob Walker saying he's talking about his dad. So I want to be very clear. We've established that Zhang is not the chairman, obviously. Is that correct? Yes or no? Correct. 
Let me show you another message. This message doesn't call Zhang Chairman Zhang, does it? It just says the Chinese want to do business with the Bidens. As a matter of fact, it says, both coming to be my partner, to be partners with the Bidens, with an S. He, Zhang, is implied, has implied that the number one has made it clear and available to him. Who is the number one? The number one is Xi Jinping. Xi Jinping, the president of China? Yes or no? The leader of the Communist Party, the CCP? Yes. Is the number one? Yes, that's the number one that Hunter was referencing in that message. Now, let's be very clear. This was in 2017, but I would like to make it known for this committee uh, that Joe Biden told the press in 2016, as a matter of fact, he, I quote, yeah, I am. I am going to run in 2020. He told the press in 2016 that he was running for president of the United States in 2020. So here is the Bidens doing business in China in 2017 when everybody knew he was planning to be president of the United States. Do you see that to be a serious problem, Mr. Bobolinsky? I do, and I wish this committee would thoroughly investigate it and focus on all the evidence that the SDNY has on CFC. They had FISA warrants, so they were recording conversations, and I wish they disclosed all that data and fact to this committee. Thank you, Mr. Bobolinsky. I yield, Mr. Chairman. Gentlelady yields back. Chair, and I'll recognize Mr. Cristomorte for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair.